Yo, what's up? How we doing? How we all doing? I thought I'd rep the old glasses and the hat today. <laughs> what's up? Should you should get the hat? It's pretty cool. How we all doing? How we all doing? That's it, Duskus mode activated. <laughs> Dripping. <laughs> Dripkus, exactly. How are you all doing, guys? Are you all good? Are you all having a, a, a wonderful day or a wonderful morning, depending on where you're from? Yo. I still find this the streaming thing so weird, honestly. But I think I think it's really cool that I can do this. At least. How many people have we got? I need to check. Let's let it like round up a little bit before we before we start. gonna start I think with just the basic um, I was messing around a little earlier um, actually no not this one this is not the right project I'm gonna start with some basic chord stuff um, and just how I go about writing music um, yeah should be should be interesting. Charlie Plucks, exactly. I just mess been messing around with this claw, claws a cappella from uh, Charlie XCX that she released a while ago. Um, I kind of think it's a nice way, or any a cappella is a nice way. Is my is my mic too quiet? Is it really quiet? I don't think it's that quiet. I, t I don't think it turns up more. Hello. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. Maybe I just need to speak into it like this. Cool. Yeah, I thought I thought it'd be interesting to start with like a vocal or something. Um, a lot of the time I start my tracks. I, I, I'd, I like to just sort of have some sort of element to start my music. Um, whether that be like some sort of ambience, um, just some sort of like straight note string, like a string note or... Um, a vocal which is a nice way because that way if you write under a vocal when you come to chop it later then the chops seem to like work really nicely um, and um, yeah just random acapellas usually I thought I'd just grab this clause one because everyone knows Charlie XCX um, I thought it'd be really cool is my mic really that quiet let me just turn it up on the old hello 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 what about now how's that or is that red? That's, that's a bit too much. That's a bit too much. How about now? Are we good? Or is that too much? Way better. Awesome. Crispy. Lovely. Yeah. So normally, like, I either get a vocal or something like that, or um, or I have my Tascam thingy, or I uh, have some random ambient stuff. Um, that gets gets me into some sort of emotional vibe or just something to write underneath um, yeah so I put this clause thing in here and just put it in time just in case I did it in the stream and, um, yes I'm going to play it for you this is a little clause thingy by Charlie X yes. you probably heard the track um, so yeah, I normally find like a vocal that I really like or an acapella that I really like and put it in time um, and then just write like 
the most emotional try and write the most emotional thing underneath it or something like that just in the dusk is five i suppose it's quite simple honestly um, i just find it quite effective because when i do come to chop chop it up later um, i don't really usually keep the acapella in i just use it as a basis but when i do come to chop it up later a lot of the chops seem to work because i've written to that vocal in the first place um, and i think that's a nice way to sort of go about it um, so let's crack into this um, another thing to note is i like to just sort of i don't really focus too much on sound design and stuff like that when i'm just writing i think um, there are a lot of artists that do they do sort of the sound design and everything as they go um, but i like to just be able to um, use like really simple sounding things like a saw wave or like low pass saw waves or whatever um, and the reason for that is yeah I want a, I want a sound that I can really distinctly hear each individual note and I'm not really too think bothered about the sound design and the reason for that is just because I like just focusing on the song and the, just the notes and the, the idea first um, and then later on I'll start messing around with the sounds um, but I think I think for me for the dusker stuff it's important just to just to write um, and not get too stressed out about like the sounds straight away um, so yeah um, I'll normally grab a vocal like this and then um, get like a straight string or something just something that I could just have like one straight note across um, that sort of gets me into I don't know a vibe um, so I've been using this little Arturia Selena thing um, very basic uh, normally just sort of low pass it or something like that like your mind, like your smile, like your eyes, I could die, aeroplane, you are so fly, singing songs like... Uh, and now I've just got this straight note going across. Um, I'll grab another really basic sound, usually like the, the analog. Um, I've been doing a lot of sessions recently with Hyundai's, and he's just like, he uses like a lot of really sort of basic sounding things that you can just really write melodies with, um, and he uses like a lot of these like cool VST guitars and things like that. Just anything that's quite basic is great to write with. And saw waves are nice because you can hear each thing. Um, so grab a little auto filter pull that down or it's gonna be really sharp and everyone's gonna scream um yeah hyundai is incredible i've been in so many like little sessions with him recently and, uh, yeah super inspiring Party time, hop inside. We're so, high. Roller so normally i'll just start drawing out notes in key um and yeah um, there's a new feature in Ableton, by the way, if you, for you people who are struggling to write things in key, where you can like literally hit scale and you can like choose the scale, um, which is quite interesting. But I've never really used that. You can also fold it down to so every note you play will be in the scale. Um, but it's a pr pretty cool. Pretty cool. Party time, hop. kind of drawing out these sort of notes in my mind I can sort of hear like the third underneath it um, or the bass if you like um, super simple I like writing with thirds and stuff like that just because then you can take out the top notes and add other notes whatever you're hearing honestly I don't really think too deep into theory when I'm writing I'm just just using my ear and yeah it's quite it's just practicing these basic sounds I think is the best way to go um, and just doing this process loads or like even just practicing on the guitar and just just thinking about the notes rather than all the other stuff keeping it super simple um.
could just sort of also mess around with the timings a little bit as well. Yeah, that's cool. And then I can start messing around with these top notes or adding other notes. Um, I normally just like a third and then and then a straight loads of straight notes. Uh, so just keep adding another note that's just straight throughout the progression. Um, start adding in start messing with that straight that straight string uh, start messing around a little bit going yo sam's in the chat no way what's up bro good um yeah super simple analog just a really basic sound um thirds and you can mess around with like the, the third try different notes i love just straight notes going through the progression stuff like that um I love this stuff is awesome um yeah yeah, 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 really cool. like just a really basic progression um i need to add in the that's really good um can add in these notes quick writing the entire thing in just one midi clip and like every normally every melody or what anything I do um, just keep it really simple just get like a song down like the same way you'd like when you write with a guitar you just you're literally writing the song on the guitar and maybe do the vocal on top um, I like to apply that sort of technique just to Ableton um, because that way you just you write and tunes you're not worrying about anything else and that to me is one of the probably the most important part um, yeah 
Yeah. Um, and then change the border. Um, but yeah, the way I literally just banged on analog um, and just low passed it. Um, yeah. What, what is this monk? What, what does that mean? What is this? Is it like some sort of... What's a monk? Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you like the bucket hat. <laughs> what is this? What is what is it? Monk. Monk? Monk. Monk. Right, um, and then I kind of from here because we written we wrote underneath a vocal. Um, the way I, I I probably can just go straight to the vocal chop stuff, uh, or yeah, um, I'd either like start chopping up this vocal using Melodyne, or I'd write a melody separately in another instrument on top of this. Um, that's maybe a little bit more less low pass, so you can hear over the, the progression. Um, Yeah, what is going on, man? What is this chat? <laughs> God's sake. Bruh. Bruh. Um. Cool. I'm going to start chopping up this vocal and show you how I do it. Party time, hop inside. So Melodyne is this wicked uh, like tuning, like really manual tuning. So it's not like live tune, it's kind of you transfer the notes into it. Um, and then you can move them around individually, shift the formants individually, choose, there's like lots of different things and you can affect everything individually. Uh, yeah. Cool. So. What I'd normally do is, if I hadn't come up with a melody yet, I'd run this entire thing into Melodyne over this melody. And then once I've done that, I essentially auto-tune every single note and keep them really straight. That's just the Dusker sound. Um, and then um, get rid of what I'm saying, get rid of all like the pitch bends and all the pitch wobbles completely, form and shift them down, and then manually just throw notes randomly um randomly um but in key um and then freeze and then flatten that um and then chop from that which is kind of yeah sometimes it's a bit long and sometimes you get nothing and you have to try a few different vocals but i've always found like some of my coolest melodies have come out of just doing this um so yeah Party time, hop inside, we're so high Roller coaster ride, diamond bright Kiss me right, yeah, that's so nice I like, I like, I like, I like, I like everything about you I like, I like, I like, I like, I like everything about you I like, I like, I like, I like, I like everything about you I like, I like, I like, I like, I like everything about you don't you hold me back Cause I know, I don't know, I don't wanna be alone it's long but like i don't know so you see a lot of these are super auto tuned already it's pretty um party time hop inside we're so high roller coaster ride diamond bright kiss me right yeah that's so nice Cool. 
Um, and yeah, I'm not really particularly like choosing. I'm just sort of sort of sort of choosing melodies as I go, but not really thinking too hard about it, and just messing up the messing it up a little bit, and then I'll freeze and flatten it, and then I'll chop from that if I, if anything pops in. There's about a fifty percent success rate, honestly. Um, and also make sure they're absolutely on the dot. Click that command. Is is that to enable form and shifting? Um, to enable form and shifting in Melodyne, essentially you just click this little knob and then you press Command A to select every note, and you can pull them all down. Um, but you can also pull them out down individually by just sort of selecting individual notes. Uh, yeah. Um, that's the cool thing with Melodyne. You can individually affect every note um, how you want, like the pitch glide, the formant, the note the volume, all sorts of things, the length, it's really nice. So normally I'd actually go quite far and just mess around making cool little melodies throughout the track until one of them really like makes me like, this is the melody and I'll jump around my room and this is it. But yeah. Um, we probably don't have time to go through the entire track. Um, maybe we can just do some over here quick. It's sort of just like kind of drawing out melodies, not thinking too much, just vibing to the chords. Um, you really get into like the nice flow state, then you, yeah, that's where the, the tunes come for me. Um. <laughs> So I had a little locator there, so I like, yeah, that's a cool melody. <laughs> 
For now, that'll do. Um, so, like, what I normally do is I just command X to Valhalla room off to cut it, um, and then I freeze and flatten this entire thing. Um, so now, so now the Melodyne is updated, the audio is updated to the Melodyne, and paste the Valhalla room back on. <laughs> And then I just go through and find my favourite parts, you know? Uh, and then you want to like bang in your like, uh, your drums next, so we can do that next. Um, so I'm one of the weird producers that uses a drum rack for my drums. Um, a lot of people do it in audio. So I seem to love drum racks and I've always done it that way so I can't be bothered to change. Um, yeah, I think um, drum samples, I, s I also do that separately. I'll spend a day just finding my favorite samples um, and then yeah, so I've done that for a bit. I'll probably use those samples every day for the year. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's, you just kind of want like placeholders. So I do have, I'll go into like the preset stuff later as well, but I, I just have like a few sample placeholders that I can use. And then I, like, again, I'm not too worried about that stuff until after, you know. Um, so yeah, it's all about the melodies for me, I suppose. Uh, let's see if we can find the forever free kick. That's weird. Oh, here it is. Let's go. Um, and then a clap. That'll do for now. Keep it super simple. Like I said, do all this other stuff later. Um, for some reason the way I made this sample I kind of um, I kind of didn't boost the lows enough so I have to do it every time I should probably re re export that I could definitely go briefly over the synthy stuff after yeah um, I like sometimes, like the same way I find my samples for a day, I also spend a few days just making, like just doing sound design and stuff like that and just experiencing the world of just sound and seeing where I can, what, what I can make, uh, what, what I can find I suppose. Um, let's go four to the floor. sound a bit weird the chops I'll sort them out in a minute um. sweet Let's bring all this stuff in a group bring it down a little bit um, another thing that's quite important I suppose for these chops to really have that breathing thing is the side chain 
Um, so I'll just grab a, I actually use the Live 8 compressor for all my side chaining. Um, and I already have a little side chain trigger set up here as my default project. So to do that now enables, and I think you can literally just click file and click save as default set or save live set as a template. They've also got a new feature now where you can actually save individual templates. Uh, if you want to say you're writing in a specific style, I don't know, um, then you can just bang open that template and you can, yeah, just go straight like that. Um, but yeah, my, my original template literally has just crackle and a, side, a four to the floor sidechain. Um, just that's kind of all I really need, to be honest. Um, so yeah, as you can see in the sidechain, it's literally just a little tiny click. Uh, you can't hear it because I haven't. Uh, and then I'll just grab the chords, um, for example, these. Uh, I like the Live 8 compressor because it doesn't have the annoying click the Live 9 and 10 compressor have. Um, a lot of people do use like LFO tools and setting up a trigger and stuff, but I just like using the Live 8 compressor and always have. So, um, cool. Let's just bang a bang that straight to the side chain. And then we can put that on the vocal as well. in there, go in as well, get the analog, just duplicate it, take out everything that is not the bass, drop it an octave below for now. Um, and then I'll just go for like I'll just duplicate this for <laughs> age. This is my weird, unique process. I don't think many people make tunes like this, but um, this is just one of the ways I make tunes. But um, I'll just go through and then just keep chopping. Like, I've, just going through, let's try other stuff. You know? <laughs> I actually think this progression is quite nice just on repeat. Oh no, uh, this one. Actually, no, maybe not. Um, cool. Right. Yeah, it's an alright melody, I suppose. Um, at least you get the process, though. You get you get the way I do it, which is the important part. Um, and then I don't know. I've been using this. Uh, mm -mm, this little hat thing from Max Alive. I think I saw. I think Tim showed me. It. I live here. Um, super simple. I 
don't know, I feel like if you make like if you make like a ton of these ideas every day, one of them is going to be a banger. And you're just using this process, you just so quickly get those melodies out. Um, um, yeah, keeping it really, really basic, honestly. But like that's just the way I love it. I think I think writing stuff should be that way. I don't think it should be too stressful. Um, yeah, I have to wear the glasses all the time just because of that, because of the infinity set that one. And then yeah, like once I've got some sort of solid idea or some sort of world going on, that's when I'll start stripping things back or trying different melodies over different sounds and all sorts of things like that. Um, I have basically just a big presets folder, and like I was saying before, I spend a day just making sounds and finding sounds I like from listening to other music, um, and then recreating those, which is a is which is actually a really great thing I'd recommend because you learn a lot about how to make things and you normally don't you don't need to make them the same way they would make something if you're like sort of copying other people's sounds because um i don't know that, that's what gives you a bit more of a unique version of it um and then you just learn a lot from doing stuff like that honestly um. <laughs> check out Melda if you haven't and you can just mess with performance due to the nature of this vocal it's already really processed and has like reverb before I even put reverb on it so it kind of performance shifting sounds a bit odd um, but yeah <laughs> And then another thing is you can then just put it in key using the auto tune after and then pitch these things up and down um, and you're just going to get so much random stuff in key I suppose. Um, yeah. Command E, you can slice these things. just do this for like hours it's a bit weird 
um, yeah have you guys got any random questions um, any questions at all about this this is just one of the ways I start making tunes if I don't start underneath a vocal then I'll um, mess around with my Tascam thingy or just create some random soundscape and then write music underneath that and write chords underneath that um, I just find it so I find just starting with just chords is a little bit too stressful for me I like to have something there that gets me in some sort of mood or some like something so I don't have to try like crazy hard you know um, how do I make a drop from this well that's a good question I suppose um, I suppose I just start structuring something up slightly and then I'd get some drums like this, get the chords, start messing around with some different patterns, um, and then maybe tr change change the sounds. Let's let's try that. Um, so I'm just going to bring up a little serum here. Why am I so hot? I just am. <laughs> I'm just born hot. Do you know what I mean? How long with that Indian summer in? Okay, let, let, let's try it. I don't know. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Um. For the, yeah, exactly. I mean, I still kind of use for all the for all the other stuff. I still kind of use that process of just writing chords underneath something, something really basic instrument, and then I'll I'll start like so. I've got some sort of progression now at least. Um. So let's just loop this thing for a minute. <laughs> Get the side chain back in there. Get the hat, bring that hat down a little bit. Right, um, and you can start. I've just done a dotted rhythm here, um, but what you can do is you can just start taking out some chords. do for now <laughs> um, and then we want to I want to do that again on the second so let's do the same what is it cool. uh, sound design now I suppose if we're gonna go into that um, let's just whack open a serum um, yeah I've, st I've started using serum less recently actually but I think everyone has serum so it's a good it's a good one to use I started using a plugin called Diva recently um, which is like an analog emulation of a synth uh, yeah like an analog synth emulation um, which is really, yeah, it sounds a little bit warmer than these sort of really digital serum -y things and silent and massive, whatever. Um, but, yeah, we can do it in serum because I think everyone has that. Um, so I'm just going to bend this. Just put an envelope on the bend, and it's just a modulation that almost bends the sign into like a saw wave type thing. Um, and then just put a low pass on it as well, just to consolidate that, I suppose. Um, I 
Another thing I sometimes like to do is actually just mess around with this LFO on the bend so you get random, other random rhythms. So if I try that as well. Um, so let me put that on a dotted maybe. I don't know. Um, put that on. Yeah, really weird stuff. Um, um, I also really love the reverb filter, and this is kind of how I came across the rising lead. Um, let's take this off. Cool. Uh, and then you can start getting these chops from before, I suppose. Um, I always love a little bit of vibrato. Um, so M Melda again. This is part of the bundle. If you just grab. It. And I just like the right, the rate really slow, depth a little bit lower, and just to give it a little bit of wobble, which makes it feel a little bit more human or organic. Um. We can just find some chops from over here. Consolidate that vocal and just try this. Um, if you grab the transients, pull them right down. Um, bit of reverb on this. Vibrato. What's wrong with that? What? <laughs> Come on, man. Put the glide on. Makes it sound cool. Maybe a little pitch bend going to the Matrix. Grab, uh, I don't know, envelope three. Master tuning. Make sure you set this little thing to that so it doesn't affect the uh, global pitch. <laughs> get like a little audio effect rack or something um, I've just upgraded to the new Ableton so I don't know what the hell um. <laughs> if I just actually screw this I'm just gonna God. I'm just gonna use this <laughs> um, Um, so yeah, reverb automation, or if you don't want to, don't want to, uh, if you don't want to like uh, automate the reverb parameters manually or whatever, then you can do this. Um, so I'm just going to grab. So I've just put an audio effect rack down here. I've got a chain. This is the original signal. 
Then we could split it into two, so now there's two chains. Um, on the second one, I'm just going to grab uh, Valhalla, let's see, Valhalla Shimmer. You can do this with many effects. Portal's a really interesting one. If, you, if you've got Portal by output, that's wicked because you can... Um, I don't really like some of them that are really OTT, but bringing them in and just sort of little blips here and there is a really cool thing. Um, so that's Valhalla Shimmer. I'm just going to whack the mix to 100%, bring the feedback up a little bit. LFO tool after. So now everything, I think Sem will show me a lot of this stuff. Sem is a wicked producer. Um, So like as you can see, like now it's coming the reverb's only coming through in like portions and it gives that sort of cr like sort of sucking sound. Um so it should sort of suck you into the next chord. can just get rid of some of these for now a lot of the time I like to have the third as the main mono sound and then all these other notes are spread into the stereo um, because it gives more power to this thing maybe portal so just create another chain grab something like portal uh, yeah cool for now I'm just gonna find a cool preset I have no idea what this is gonna if this is gonna be cool or not change just dry signal um. thing I suppose at this point um, you just you could just sort of chop sample vocal chops in and stuff I think for like the stuff I was doing before where the chords are more like legato or just not as choppy um, 
then yeah you can have like nice long sort of phrasing it really depends like if you've got something like you've got really got to go of the theme of what you're making so, so just commit to what the direction it's going rather than trying to adjust um yeah um so if it's long notes like this where the notes are kind of well it's not anymore because it used to be analog um then the vocal chops can be nice and long and smooth where if it's like quite a choppy thing you want, you might want some little blips of vocal chops coming through you know um um, just commit to the direction the track's going rather than adjust trying to change change it to something it's not uh, I need to put this compressor on here has anyone got any questions by the way Questions? Do you count them? Any? How many years you make music? Um, I don't know. A long time. I was making tunes, I suppose, on my guitar before producing. Um, it's simple melody stuff, really. Um, do you side showing a reverb? Yes, of course. How do you know a good one from a great one? Um, goosebumps, man. If you have like that feeling, then you know. I'm feeling good, bruv. Do you do this kind of thing for different genres? Yeah, I suppose like some a lot of these ways are universal. Maybe not like the reverb automation stuff, but um, the writing way is kind of, I do the same thing when I'm writing with my guitar, keeping it really simple. I, t I suppose when I use a guitar, I actually write, usually write differently. The, the music, the musicality, everything's a little bit different. Um, and I write in a piano roll with an analog. It's different. It's sort of different. It usually comes out differently. Um, yeah. How do you get over writer's block? Um, I suppose just keep writing. I don't know. I usually say take a break. I don't know, but I find just. Um, I usually find like just purposefully making shit music makes gets rid of the writer's block thing or just accepting some sort of acceptance sort of thing where you um, you stop worrying too much and just actually just make music and stop worrying about the end product just practicing I think yeah like a lot of people sort of go into making a song uh, working on a track with the idea that there should be a final product but I think um practicing making music is going into a song and just practicing and that's that's a different thing how do you get to the point where you can just put whatever is in your head into actual chords and music um i don't know practice 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 ableton 11 is worth is worth the upgrade for sure for sure Ableton 11 is awesome, I think. Um, I haven't actually used many of the new features yet, to be honest. I've only just downloaded it yesterday. Um, I was worried that Ableton 10 would like it would just upgrade the previous application, but it's nice because it's it's actually its own application, which is cool. My favorite VSTs, uh, free uh, Melda, I suppose. Check that out. VST for free dot com used to be a website I used to use about seven years ago, six years ago, where there's just tons of free VSTs. Check that out. They might have renamed it now. I'm not sure. What do you do if you don't know what to make? Um, just make. <laughs> just get my guitar or draw something in here. Get around, find some new vocals, which is the annoying thing. I need. To, a lot of my stuff relies on just having a vocal thing first, and then. You're welcome. Have you noticed any CPU issues of Ableton 11? No, 
But on that note, actually, I think there's a new thing where you can, is it here? Sorry. Oh, you can actually see now, if you click this little C, you can see the CPU usage of every single channel, um, which is quite nice because you can sort of figure out what is destroying, what is giving you like problems. How do you get vocal chops? <laughs> uh, you make them with other with acapellas. I'm sure one day I'll be at Hamburg again, I hope. That would be incredible. What is your favourite key or scale to write music in? I don't think about it, honestly, I just write. If I start thinking like, oh, it should be in this, I don't know, I just write. And then after I might put like a, a waves tuner on the master and mess around with different uh, pitches, see what's cool. So you make a good loop and you get stuck. I, t I to be honest find like for me writing the chorus or the drop first is um, the best thing for me because I can normally get the verses and the minimal stuff is quite easy. You know what I mean? You're just writing the same progression into the verses with just more minimal elements. How did you find your sound? Just messing around in Ableton and like, I don't know, I suppose like replicating sounds I like in a t in a complete in the complete wrong way and you end up with your own sound uh, I do usually mix everything I do well I always mix with everything I do um, and then I'll send it to Tim to get it mastered because he's wicked, because he's amazing. How many sunglasses do I own? Uh, if you just wait right there. Get the collection out. Got a few pairs here. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Do you have any tips on how to make, make a better melody? Practice, sing it in your head. When you're, listen, when you're listening to a chord progression, hum in your head, get in, practice that every, every day. Uh, and then eventually we get to the point where just melodies pop in. I think that's it, it's just, sometimes they just pop in out of nowhere. Um, after practicing for a while, they just, if you've got a cool progression, hopefully, just keep trying different progressions until one pops in, <laughs> that's what I do. create a track you think it's a winner do you then bounce it down to audio and mix it in a different project no I mix I mix it all in the same project because I might want to tweak a synth or something and it'd be really annoying if that was a stem but I do also see that sometimes the limitations of things um, sort of putting it to audio gives you that sort of checkpoint and you're like yeah I'm, li I'm limited now um, but yeah um, yeah Favorite way of making music text wake of making music textures. Um, I actually really like the granulator in Ableton. So uh, if you go Max for Live, uh, granulator, the free go on maxforlive.com. You can download that. Um, and then just finding a song that you like and just running it into it. Let's just run this entire idea into it. See what happens. It's going to grab a analog. Uh. See, you know what? I'm just going to find another song. I don't know. This is this is just really cool. Sometimes I actually like to just run, I'll just resample the entire song. Um, 
sit master for now. And this is like a cool song with strings. Normally things that don't really have um, too much, like too, like no percussion or anything like that. Just stuff that's like strings or cool progressions. Um, um, I'll record that into. <laughs> And I just like, yeah, if, if you've got some songs with just long strings and stuff like that that change, then you can just come up with completely random progressions that way as well. Um, so if I just put this in here now, for example, this is really simple. Um, but this is just one straight note like that. Spread, spray. What was that? <laughs> Maybe you can get an auto filler, just notch it. And then I could just copy the chords and write a, a new idea and then put some vocals on top of that, try different things and yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, that's the vibe. I'm glad you've learned something, that's awesome. Um, I would have to clear the acapella if I wanted to release this, release this for sure. I just thought it would be cool as an example to show you guys. Um, what drum what sample packs? I, I actually tend to sort of, I've got Splice, but I tend to stay away from it, to be honest. Um, I just go through Reddit <laughs> and Reddit and stuff like that, find really old packs, speak to friends who, who I, I've got a bunch of musicians in my house who make samples as well, you know, like, <laughs> so it's whatever, like, just... Um, make my own kicks, my own stuff, or just use really basic things, whatever, like, I don't know. But yeah, pull stretch is great for textures, whoever said that, yeah, I can show you that quick. So we just got this progression, um, I'm gonna just duplicate it quick and then I'm gonna just grab this one freeze flatten into audio grab some pull stretch uh, it's a pull X stretch my bad um, and then actually want that on a MIDI Audio, sorry. Uh, open up the plugin. You see that now? Pull the time down. Um, you can really stretch it out. And it uses like reverb to sort of join it, and merge it together. It's really, really interesting. It's a free plugin. Check it out.
that's it that is it that's like how I start my stuff I suppose and come up with stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um. I think I, on that note uh, I believe some of you actually asked some questions beforehand I'm gonna just see what we got where can I get a pair of those shades? These are the questions that you guys sent on Instagram before, by the way. I'm just going to go through these quickly before I end the stream. Um, you can get these shades if you type in sports. Well, actually, not these ones, but the Infinity Set ones. Just sports glasses. Amazon, have a look. <laughs> um, how many elements for face check do you make? Uh, I sort of went through that. I think we kind of answered all of these, to be honest, going through the with the stream already, which is nice. Yep, we've gone through most of these. Yeah. I believe this stream will be saved, so yeah. On that note, thank you very much everyone for tuning in. Uh, I hope you learnt something or at least had some fun. Um, I love you all and appreciate the support. It's always It always blows my mind, honestly. Really, like... Um, lockdown sucks, but hopefully next year or maybe, I don't know, sometime soon, I'll see you in real life. Much love. Peace out, everyone.